Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Brian Atkinson from Configurable Management and in today's video we are going to talk about the PA40 transaction. If you are um, in HR, you're probably very familiar with this transaction. You use it uh, for hiring and termination and changes in pay, um, uh, lot, lots of different actions. Um, what I want to show you is how this uh, personal actions and these action types um, are configured um, and uh, I've got a fairly standard I guess uh, default list of, of actions but I want to show you how you can um, uh, you may not have the authority to configure this screen and change it but um, you could definitely gather the requirements uh, within your HR department and see uh, what actions um, different groups of people need uh, and the way this configuration is done is it's broken up by um, it can be broken up by user group. So let's say you you meet with your colleagues and you determine that um, there are three key user groups. So we'll call them um, Z1, Z2, and Z3. Um, and you can determine what actions are needed inside those user groups. Maybe one group only needs four or five actions. Another group maybe needs ten. And then maybe there, there's a um, a super user group that needs uh, you know 20 30 40 uh, different actions um, where they can uh, almost do anything um, so um, so I just want to walk through that and show how this uh, configuration is done so you're aware it may help you in gathering requirements and then you can pass that on to your SAP team and um, hopefully get that set up and and have a little more friendly screen when you come to uh, PA 40 um, okay so let me show you how this screen um, defaulted like this um, to begin with um, and, and the way it happened is um, I am going to go to the IMG um, so I got here through transaction SPRO uh, you may not be able to get there in some of your systems uh, hopefully you can uh, uh, maybe in a sandbox um, or, or maybe there's a QA system where you can um, see the configuration in display mode um, but see, I'm, I'm in personnel management, uh, personnel administration, uh, customizing procedures, actions, and then I'm looking at the change info, um, or I'm oh, sorry, change action menu. And I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to go to this user group dependency. And notice the actions line here is set to uh, reference user group 10. And what this means is that if there's not a user group to defined under your user ID in your parameters, and I'll show you where that's at in a minute, then by default it's going to use uh, user group 10. Um, and if we go look at my parameters, um, the parameter I'm looking for is a, is a parameter ID called uh, UGR. Um, and uh, I can actually type that in here and press enter. And you'll see that's the user group for HR master data. And I don't have anything in here. so. Um, since the configuration doesn't see, in, see anything for, or when the transaction runs, since it doesn't see anything for my user ID, it's going to, uh, based on the configuration, it's going to use user group 10. So if I um, back out one screen, go to the action menu, um, and then I'm going to say I want to look at the actions, um, and then I use the position button here, I'm going to navigate to user group 10, you're going to see all the different actions hire, hire applicant, uh, country reassignment, ESS new hire. And if I go and look at my screen, you're going to notice that's the exact same entries that I see here. Okay, so now let's say you've worked on gathering the requirements and you, um, you have figured out what actions you want in your first um, user group. Uh, we'll call that Z1. Um, what a uh, configurator would do is they would just um, set up some new entries so we'll do new entries um, and let me back up we're gonna page all the way down here real quick make sure Z1 doesn't exist it, it might already uh, but nope it's not in here alright so we're gonna uh, do new entries and, um, and what they would do is they would just set up Z1 and let's say um, in the first one you had um, seven seven actions you wanted so we're just gonna put that in here seven times five six seven and we'll just uh, give them a very simple order um, that we want them to be in and you could put 
you know, uh, they could figure it could put gaps in the numbers here so they could insert other stuff in the future so they didn't have to renumber everything. Um, whatever worked best uh, for them. And then, then you know, um, you may have told them what actions you, you wanted um, and have already told them the numbers. Or maybe you just said you wanted the, the hiring action, right? So they would, they would bring that up and, and put that in there. Um, and then um, let's pick some other actions. Um, so maybe you wanted um, uh, termination as well. So we've got hire and we could do termination. Um, but maybe you also wanted the ability to do um, change of position. And let's see, maybe um, we'll do retirement action. We'll just pick, pick a number of actions here. Uh, change of pay. Um, let's pick two more. And uh, change job. Let's see, maybe a leave of absence one. Let's see, here we go, leave of absence. Okay, so they put all those in there. And if I press enter, you see the d descriptions come in. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna save this. All right, and I'm gonna back out. And that is now set up. Now, from a configuration perspective, right? Nothing changed here. This is still gonna by default. Um, it's gonna use. Uh, user group 10 if it doesn't see anything in my uh, parameters but I'm now gonna um, so now what you would want to do is if you directly have access to this is transaction su3 in on the parameters tab if you've got access here you could you could come in here yourself and, and set that parameter um, a lot of companies don't allow you to do that so you would have to uh, put in a request to your um, uh, either your uh, basis administrator or your sec security administrator, whoever would handle that, um, to add this UGR parameter um, and um, and the value. And we Z1 is the, is the user group we want. And I'm going to save that. And now notice if I rerun PA40 that um, those exact actions um, are there um, it, um, in the order that we had put them in. So um, I hope that was helpful, kind of showed you how this uh, screen is configured. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, may maybe you'll find, um, you know, an opportunity to use this at your company so that you're not scrolling through a long list of actions. You can uh, get rid of the actions you, you never use um, and uh, ask your, your SAP team to create something a little more user friendly. All right. Well, thank you for your time and um, take care.